court has won a default judgment that Iranian officials, including its supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, provided help to the 9-11 hijackers behind the worst terror attack on American soil. The lawsuit was filed by the families of the atrocities' victims. There was no Iranian representation in the court. It's an interesting story, this. Let's talk to Michelle Chusadovsky, director of the Centre for Research on Globalization. He's on the line from Montreal. Michelle, evening. Um, what do you make of this case? Do you believe Iran aided the, the 9-11 attacks? Well, there's absolutely no evidence that Iran aided the 9-11 attacks. There's ample evidence after collection of uh, evidence that there was conspiracy and complicity at the highest levels of the U.S. government. The, the, the narrative of the 9-11 Commission report has been refuted in numerous, by numerous scholars and writers and journalists, intelligence analysts. There is absolutely no evidence that al-Qaeda or the Taliban were involved in the 9-11 attacks. Uh, in fact, if there's anybody behind al-Qaeda, it was the Central Intelligence Agency going back to the, uh, the Soviet-Afghan war. Uh, Afghanistan was invaded on the pretext that they had attacked America. This was stated, uh, it was stated on the morning of uh, September 12, 2001. It was, uh, it was the pretext also for NATO's involvement uh, under Article 5 of the Washington Treaty. Um, and this judgment, in fact, I would consider it as a timely propaganda ploy directed against Iran, where you accuse Iran of 9-11 with a view to waging war on Iran. And that is not the only, uh, you know, media disinformation uh, uh, campaign which has now been waged against, uh, against Tehran. Uh, but there's another aspect to that. Uh, President Ahmadinejad, back in uh, earlier this year at the General Assembly of the, Ninth, of, uh, of the United Nations, actually made the statement that, um, or insinuated that the U.S. government was behind the 9-11 attacks, and he questioned the official narrative. Other heads of state and heads of government have, have done likewise. Uh, but what is, uh, is interesting in uh, Ahmadinejad's statement to the United Nations Security Council is that he, he not only endorses 9-11 truth, uh, he questions the official narrative, but then in the wake of his statements, we get a statement from al-Qaeda in the Reagan Peninsula through their official magazine, which accuses the Iranian president of being totally disinformed and, in fact, disassociating themselves from the Iranian president. So there you are, al-Qaeda mm. says, no, uh, we did it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm textualizing the, this magazine report of al-Qaeda in the Iranian Peninsula, which made the headlines a few months back, yeah. and says the, the Iranian president doesn't know what he's talking about. Michelle, there's and a... He endorses 9-11 truth. Michelle, as we know, this has been so hotly debated for so many years now, and there, there are strong feelings of, in, in both camps still, even to this day. But just looking at this ruling, um, what's it going to do now for uh, U.S.-Iranian relations that are already dodgy and, and are getting worse by the looks of it? Well, this is, uh, I think this is really uh, part of the propaganda ploy. You demonize your enemy, you present Iran as a threat to global security, as a, you know, as an upcoming nuclear power which threatens the world. You say that Iran supports the war on terrorism, when in fact the war on terrorism is, is supported by the United States of America. We see it in Libya, where they actually supported the Libya Islamic Fighting Group, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So that, in, in, in fact, we are dealing with fabrications and fabrications whereby um, uh, uh, a war agenda, which has been on the Pentagon's drawing board for many years, uh, now is seeking a justification to go live. And we've seen the drone attacks. We've seen uh, uh, various... Uh, um, we've seen the sanctions regime... We've seen economic sanctions unfolding. Why does the United States want to attack Iran? Because Iran has 10% of the world's oil reserves, uh, four or five times those of the United States of America. It's in a crucial region. It doesn't accept uh, U.S. hegemony. 
Uh, it's an ally of Russia and China. And um, I, I, I think we must understand that any kind of military operation directed against Iran or directed against Syria could unleash a war which extends from the eastern Mediterranean right through to Central Asia to the Chinese border, and then we are in a World War III scenario. And uh, I, I should also mention that nuclear weapons are contemplated to be used against Iran, not only by the United States of America and Israel, but also by several non-nuclear states which have nuclear weapons on, on in their respective military bases, and I'm talking about Belgium, Holland, Germany, Turkey, and Italy. They are non-nuclear powers, but they possess, made in America, tactical nuclear weapons, B6, B6, uh, uh, B-6111, and these are all targeted at the Islamic Republic of Iraq. Michelle, it's a very grim picture you, uh, you paint there, if the worst ever did happen. But uh, thank you for your thoughts for now, Michelle Jushadovsky, director of the Center for Research on Globalization. Thank you very much.